Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have bullish news to share with you all. This is big. Ray Dalio confirmed that he's holding Bitcoin. He was a longtime skeptic. He was funding Bitcoin at one point. Then we saw he started engaging in conversations and now he's holding Bitcoin. Guys, this is so bullish. And also, Michael Saylor and Elon Musk have spoken to Bitcoin miners in the United States about renewable energy. Guys, this is so crucial of what we've been talking about that Bitcoin isn't going away, the mining isn't going away, and the recent FUD is nothing. They're going to move towards renewable energy. I'll break it all down for you guys, and I have some personal big news here I want to share with you. So before we go into it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, if you haven't seen my interview with Michael Arrington from three days ago, be sure to check it out. I'll put a link in the description. We talk about Elon Musk, Bitcoin mining, XRP, the Ripple lawsuit, everything. You got to watch it. Michael is a, a, a smart guy, Silicon Valley legend, the founder of TechCrunch, of course, and now he's investing in crypto. Also, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter. Please sign up. Link in the description. And guys, the big news, if you follow me on Twitter, you may have seen this. I am officially part of the OKCoin OK team. OKCoin OK is a crypto exchange, and they actually just launched their new uh, site design. As you can see here, this is what the new look um, it, it looks like, I should say. <laughs> um, and they're a really great exchange, and I've joined them and I'm looking to help them grow. So I'm excited to be a part of it. So if you would like to sign up with OKCoin, OK please click on the link in the description, and uh, I will be sharing updates on OKCoin. OK Obviously, I'll uh, give you guys any perks or whatever it is you know that I can offer to you but more to come on that front but I'm excited to go full crypto uh, and before I was doing um, not working in the crypto industry you know I have the YouTube channel and podcast of course but that's a side thing uh, but I'm now full-time crypto guy so excited to be in this market that's how bullish I am about crypto <laughs> uh, it's now my full it, it, the, it pays my bills now my, it's my livelihood now, the, the crypto market, uh, some a slight recovery here, but we're still in that correction phase, consolidation phase. And we're going to move sideways and then we'll break out. And I do think the news that we heard today will, will be the rocket fuel to take us to the next level up, the next leg up in this bull run. Because as you can see here from the stock to flow model from plan B, we still got some ways to go. We, we, you know, the indication of the color codes here, we're in the orange phase. We have to get to that yellow phase, guys. And uh, the next leg up will take us to higher highs. Uh, you know, if I were to make the analogy, we went from Earth to the moon. You know, we're, we're kind of around the moon right now. And then we, we're going to go from moon to Mars, um, if, I, if I'm to make that analogy correctly. So we're still on track. And this is not based on my emotions or my dreams or, um, you know, what I dreamt up or whatever, right? This is based on the trends, the data, like the stock to flow model. So I'm backing this up with data, not not uh, you know stuff I'm pulling out of my ass or whatever, right? I, I, we got to keep it fact based here. And uh, what's been happening, guys? Whales have been accumulating. So check this out: Bitcoin whales accumulate 122,500 and change uh, Bitcoin amid the latest market mayhem. Some of Bitcoin's most influential holders bought the dip during the last week's market meltdown. So I personally bought the dips as well. Well, um, I'm not a whale. I wish I was, but uh, I've been you know, buying up as much as I can um, and not financial or investment advice. You should do your own research, of course, and only invest what you're willing to lose. But clearly, the big players have been buying up. And one such, I believe, was Ray Dalio. Here's what this man had to say. He, Ray Dalio runs uh, Bridgewater Associates, which is the largest hedge fund and, you, and this in, is in a world of many hedge funds that exist right now, right? He has the, the largest, guys. Lots of money, lots of credibility, lots of history, lots of influence. So the fact that he has done this is significant. Ray Dalio, here's the headline. I have some Bitcoin. The billionaire hedge fund boss sees an inflationary future where cr cash is trash and BTC catches on as a store of wealth. He still doubts governments will tolerate it. So he still has his concerns. Uh, but, you know, what we've seen, lots of governments have come out against Bitcoin and trying to ban it. Has it worked? Nope. Because it's too decentralized in a, in a sense of, the mining can be picked up in any part of the world and continue the algorithm. In addition, how the hell do you police every in individual that can have uh, Bitcoin, right? It's it's not that easy to uh, track or, or trace down. Yes, there is ways to trace it and track it. I'm not saying it's completely like anonymous, obviously, 
But, you know, if you're not in certain countries and you, you, you travel overseas and you have Bitcoin, what are they going to do? They can't do anything, right? You have it on your hardware wallet. It's not like you walk around saying, I have Bitcoin, or they can uh, confiscate confiscate something from, from you like cash or a card or whatever it is, right? So it, this is a growing trend, guys, that these big time macro investors are seeing the inflation, the money printing, and they see crypto, Bitcoin and crypto as uh, a hedge. And that's what we've been talking about for a long time. That's why I have Bitcoin in my portfolio. Do I believe Bitcoin is the best for payments? No. Do I believe Bitcoin can handle a lot of uh, transactions? No. The, the, is, is it uh, you know the greatest crypto? No. But is it a great store of value? You know, you look at gold and what its use case is now. No one carries around gold with them, even in a digital age. But do people invest in gold as a store of value? Hell yeah. And that's what Bitcoin is becoming. People who don't understand this are trying to compare Bitcoin to Ethereum and XRP. And it's like Bitcoin has a different use case. I don't use Bitcoin for payments. I use XRP because it's super fast and cheap. But I understand the use cases. They're it's completely separate, right? So Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio said the US dollar is on the verge of devaluation on a level last seen in 1971. And that China is threatening the greenback's role as the world's reserve currency. In such an environment, Bitcoin with its gold-like properties looks increasingly attractive as a savings vehicle, said Dahlia, whose firm started 2021 with $101.9 billion in assets under management, making it the world's largest hedge fund. Guys, Paul Tudor Jones put up the, a really big green flag last year, right? And that ushered in a lot of Wall Street and a lot of hedge, other hedge funds and investment firms. Then Michael Saylor put up another green flag by saying, hey, corporates, you can put Bitcoin in your balance sheet. And we saw Tesla do it and we saw a whole bunch of other companies as well. And then PayPal came along and obviously they were they were the, uh, one of the biggest payments companies to do this. And then now credit card companies are doing, banks are doing it. So when you have the the, the the, the creme de la creme, if you want to put it, put it that way, or the king of all hedge funds doing this, what do you think is going to happen next? Game theory suggests this. no other bank or investment firm is, doesn't want to get left behind, right? So here's, here's what he had to say. Personally, I'd rather have Bitcoin than a bond. That is so bullish. I would rather have Bitcoin than a bond. Go back 10 years. Nobody would be saying this. They, they would think you're crazy. You're out of your mind. But a paradigm shift is taking place. The disruptive nature of the crypto market is taking place here. It, it, no one can ignore it. As I've been saying many times, the train has left the station. The genie's out the bottle. You cannot ignore it. If you don't innovate and adapt to Bitcoin and the crypto market, you will become like Blockbuster. You will go out of business. The internet put Bitcoin, uh, Blockbuster out of business because they didn't adapt, adapt. They didn't innovate and build on it. Netflix came along, stole their lunch. And if these guys want to stay relevant, they need to do this. So like he said, I'd rather have Bitcoin than a bond. In an inflationary scenario, Dalio said during an hour-long conversation with Coindesk Chief Content Officer Michael J. Casey, uh, he said, now this, his interest is more than hypothetical or academic. I have some Bitcoin, Dahlia volunteered in the middle of the interview recorded on uh, May 6th. This is awesome, guys. Uh, this is very, very bullish. If you understand money, politics, the economy, investing, and who this guy is and, and the size of uh, his hedge fund, this is a significant item in, in the timeline of crypto. Um and, and you want more bullish news here? Crypto is here to stay as a kind of digital goal, former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. His title, former U.S. Treasury Secretary. Let me play the clip for you. Basic question, does it matter? I mean, you have said on this program, you think uh, cryptocurrency is here to stay. Why is it here to stay and what does it do for us? Look, does it matter to the overall economy? Does it matter to the growth of standard of living of uh, Americans? Is it as important an issue as it is an issue that attracts media attention? No, to all of those questions. Is there a desire and is there a long-standing human desire to hold an asset that feels separate and apart from the day-to-day -day workings of governments. 
I think the answer to that question, history shows, is yes. I think gold has been the primary asset of that kind for a long time. And I think that crypto has a chance of becoming an agreed form that people who are looking for safety hold wealth uh, in. So my guess is that crypto is here to stay and probably here to stay as a kind of digital gold. And if you imagine that crypto became half or even a third of the total value of the non-use value of gold, that would be a substantial appreciation from uh, current levels. And that's why I think there's a good prospect uh, that crypto will be part of the system uh, for quite a while uh, to come. But is crypto going to usher in some kind of libertarian paradise? Are most of us going to be making most of our payments using uh, Bitcoin or some other uh, crypto asset? I rather doubt it. Is this going to be something fundamental for commerce on the internet? It may be an important part of commerce on uh, the internet. Uh, that's how I would uh, think about it. Basic way. Wow, guys, former U.S. Treasury Secretary. I mean, just some bullish comments. He understands it. And of course, you know, he has the talking point. You know, it's just going to become like a daily currency or something. No, because of course, they're not going to take a stance against the U.S. dollar. But clearly, he sees crypto as the part of the future and it's here to stay. And he talked about Bitcoin being a form of digital gold. These are bullish statements and they're not from just any hacks or some random person off the, the streets, right? These are people who uh, worked in the government. I mean, obviously, we talked about Ray Dalio. They have a solid track record of their experience, their success and in investing in other markets. And now they're here in the crypto market. Now, guys, I know we've all been frustrated with Elon, <laughs> right? Rightfully so. Check what he just tweeted out today. Spoke with North American Bitcoin miners. They committed to publish current and plan renewable usage and to ask miners uh, to do so. Um, miners WW, I don't know what that means. Um, unless my brain's not working today. Potentially promising. And now Michael Saylor retweeted that and he said, Yesterday, I was pleased to host a meeting between Elon Musk and the leading Bitcoin miners in North America. The miners have agreed to form the Bitcoin Mining Council to promote energy usage transparency and accelerate sustainability initiatives worldwide. Guys, when I tell you that the U.S. is going to allow Bitcoin mining. Yes, they're going to want renewable energy, but this is going to become, as we've been talking about for years, the global, the geo macroeconomic battle for control of Bitcoin's hash rate. You think, you think the United States wants to see China have a large percentage of that control with their mining pools there? Hell no. Hell no, right? And and especially when the U.S. companies are going to hold Bitcoin and balance sheet, the biggest of the biggest, the mega banks, Morgan Stanley, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, right? They're all here. We, we've been talking about it. So this is a move in the right direction. As I've always stated, I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I do believe they need to fix the mining issue because of the environmental impact. But it looks like that's happening and Elon's leading that. And I believe if, it, it, you know, one of the theories we had talked about, why did Elon do this? One was the green energy credit from the Biden administration. Two, he potentially has a solution because that's what the hell he's doing, right? With his cars and, and obviously solar panels and all that. So I think this is a win-win for him. I think uh, he's a smart guy, obviously. Obviously, it was annoying the way he handled some of this and the fact that he was pushing Doge at the same time, which was like, dude, they're both proof of work, Bitcoin and, and Doge. What are you doing? But I think we see the direction going. He's continuing the conversation. He's talking to Bitcoin miners, and I'm sure he's going to try to introduce a solution from uh, Tesla. So we're on track, guys. We are on track. Final news here, which I like to share these items because it shows this emerging market is growing and it's attracting the talent from the traditional markets. Coinbase hires Goldman Sachs exec to ramp up policy push in Washington. The publicly traded crypto exchange is adding Faryar Sherzad to handle government relations. What is the other thing we've been talking about for years? 
the crypto market needs to lobby. If you understand how money and politics works in the United States, they got to lobby. They got to do campaign donations. They got to get the the regulators on their and the congressmen and congresswomen on their uh, side, guys. This is how it's going to work because guess what? There's probably a lot of banks and, and a lot of companies and so forth don't like the fact that crypto is taking money out of their pockets, so to speak, or into the traditional investments. They don't like it. And they're going to lobby against that. Now, will they be able to stop it? Of course not. Like we said, the trains left the station. They can't stop it. The innovation, the disruption is taking place. The paradigm shift is taking place. And when you have guys like Ray Dalio coming out and, and, and making statements like this, I think I think uh, the future of this market is very bright. And now, the, the, the important thing, what people don't understand is the volatility. And I always say the same swings that take us very high also take us low. That's okay. That's that's what makes it very lucrative to, and the ability to make significant returns, right? You can have that sick, that crazy upside. No other market does this. That crazy, crazy upside, and then not expect you know the high volatility. It, it, you can't have it your cake and eat it too, right? So you got to be able to stomach these volatile moves, and but with the key is patience and understanding the market cycles. So you're not in this blindly. That's why I share these macro level charts with you because it's not my emotion. It's not what you feel or I feel. No, what does the data say? What's built into the market? Now, is it 100% exact or, you know, or certainty or a science? Obviously not, right? There's gonna be some uh, room for error, but we can get as close as possible and model out what the market might do here. And I think that the stock to flow model has been pretty accurate. And like I said, we got another leg up here to go. And uh, this this Ray Dalio news, this MicroStrategy, excuse me, Michael Saylor, Elon Musk news is more fuel for this rocket to, to go up to the next level. Guys, what do you think about the news? Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank <laughs> you.